Pain I agree. So, um, you guys are reading books 21 and 22 of the Odyssey. Obviously, I skipped around a lot. That was always my plan if, when we taught it in class. I was going to do like a group thing and have you guys divided for different parts of the text. Um, but since I had to teach it to basically like all of you guys at once, um, I just picked out the most important things that you'll typically need to know for 10th grade um so i try to pick out the things that are the most important um i just wanted you guys to get experience with the text to get to know some of the classic characters and to understand the basic themes and the thing that the text is trying to teach us um odysseus's journey is basically the blueprint for almost all hero journeys that come after it so knowing it and just being familiar with it is a very important for you guys to understand a lot of allusions and references as you continue on your literature journey um through high school so even even if you don't totally get everything as long as you were exposed to it and you understand like some of the things that happened in some of the learning experiences I that's kind of like the big thing here so at the end of the Odyssey um, there are books after 21 and 22 21 and 22 are the big one so 21 and 22 um, like I said I have your assignment on my phone but like I said here um, um, Odysseus finally arrives home um, the Phoenicians I think it's how it's pronounced I can't remember exactly but um, after he tells him tells them his big sob story they want to help him so they help him get home um they build him a boat, a boat and they help him go to Ithaca um Poseidon gets mad at them for helping <laughs> for helping Odysseus and they uh crash all their boats and turn people to stone I think but it's not super important but yeah Poseidon is like still holding a grudge so he actually punishes the Phoenicians for helping Odysseus come home but Odysseus returns home um he meets up with it's something called a swine herd um obviously it's someone who is a farmer and he keeps swine obviously but he was a big part of Odysseus's home life um he was there when Odysseus was growing up with his father and Odysseus's father is dead now but the swine herd and Odysseus are very close so Odysseus is first in disguise um but then he reveals himself to Telemachus and then eventually he reveals himself to his swine herd as well so um his son and he are making a plan that they're going to try to pursue and slaughter and get rid of all of the suitors in the house so that they can rescue Odysseus's wife Penelope and so that he can resume um being on the throne so um for book 21 um Penelope has a dream um and Athena actually puts the dream in her head at the very beginning you can see it says upon Penelope most worn in love and thought Athena cast a gr cast a glance like a gray scene lifting her now to bring the tough bow out and bring the iron blades now try those dogs at archery to usher bloody slaughter in so she gives Penelope the idea of doing a bow a shooting contest so that is kind of where the idea comes from now the reason that they're doing this particular contest if you look on the next page um when Odysseus was young and his father was still alive um it says that he was given the master bowman's arm for he Odysseus's father left it on his deathbed for his son so long story short I'm not going to get into it Odysseus has like a super good um, archery skill and he has like a super good bow arm so they're gonna do the bow challenge so that they can find out like which person is basically like most like Odysseus because Penelope doesn't really like Odysseus does not realize Odysseus is there but Athena does so Athena's like Athena's like well if we do the bow challenge then you know for sure Odysseus is gonna win and like that should be fine so um the question says what does the contest of the bow symbolize um this is a great question so there are a lot of ways that you can answer this um it could represent the importance of family and heritage because it is from odysseus's father and it's like a whole big story um it could symbolize you know that odysseus isn't really strong he's just very skilled and clever and cunning so again it's not like a let me punch you in the face challenge it's specifically archery which takes a lot of skill and practice so it could be something else that's talking about odysseus being hero um and then if we move on to the next question where it says why can't the, sh the suitor string the bow and then it says can telemachus spring string it so if you look um she declares the contest and then the swine herd starts tearing up a little bit because he recognizes the bow and you know he's a little emotional because he's like oh my goodness there's my bow um and then telemachus talks and he says um because everybody's like making fun of him 
And she says, is there a man here made like Odysseus? I remember him from childhood. I can even see him now. So this is what they say, um, but they're making fun of him because he's crying. And then Telemachus kind of butts in and Telemachus tries to string it. So Telemachus um, works for a long time. So it says three times he put his back into it and sprang it. Three times he gets to slack off. Still, he meant to string that bow and pull for the needle shot. A fourth try and he had it all but strong when a stiffening in Odysseus made him check. Abruptly, then he stopped and turned and said blast and damn it must i be a milksop all my life half grown all thumbs no strength or knack at arms to defend myself if someone picks a fight with me so telemachus is really struggling to string it and his father is watching and he's and telemachus is stressed out and he's upset and he, it's kind of like his coming of age you know telemachus says am i really going to be this way all my life like i'm nothing like my dad i'm not strong i'm not clever like i'm just a little kid like you know he's having all of these moments and that's kind of where his growing up happens he's reunited with his father and then he is kind of able to grow into a man kind of you'll see but that's kind of what's going on here and then he says take over oh my elders and betters try the bow run off the contest so he gives it to other people um and they are they can't do it either so typically a lot of them are failing to string it um, and they're all rude. Um, Ant Antinous says, you were not born. You never had it in you to pull that bow or let an arrow fly. And it's like, whoa. So everyone's super mean to Telemachus because they all also kind of think he's a loser. So they're all kind of mean to him because they're rude. But um, finally, the um, Odysseus follows them outdoors. And he is able to string the bow. And Odysseus shoots it perfectly. And then Odysseus says, I am at home for I am he. So Odysseus, you can see right here, I wrote secrets out. So Odysseus finally says, I'm home. You know, it's me. <laughs> he has to make the most dramatic, dramatic entrance in the world because Odysseus is kind of a drum king. So he's like, hey, I'm home. What's up? You know, so he's here. Um, he says, he says, now listen to my orders. When the time comes, those gentlemen to a man will be dead against giving me bow or quiver. Defy them. Um, giving the bow and put it in my hands there at the door. Tell the women to lock their own door tight. So he is getting ready to um, basically murder everyone. He says, not only because we lose that bride, women are not lacking. No, the worst is humiliation. To be shown up for the children measured against Odysseus. We who cannot even hitch the string over this bow. So they're all kind of mad because he, they are all kind of ashamed of themselves. So um, Eurymachus is one of the dudes who's kind of a douche. And he's mad because he's been made a fool of. And then you have Antinous, who's another, told you he's another douche. He says, come to yourself. You know that that is not the way this business ends. Today the islanders held holiday, a holy day. No day to sweat over a bowstring. Um, and he says, no one comes to Odysseus' hall tonight. He says, it's cool. Like, we can just stay here and hang out. Um, so they all are basically getting ready to still hang out there. Like, there's nothing he can do. Like, he's gone. He was gone. So, you know, whatever. Uh, it says, Apollo will give me power to whom he wills, but let me try my hand at the smooth bow. So, um... Odysseus says that it is his time, since they all were nagged by fear that he could string it. So... It says, Antinous, discourteous to a guest of Telemachus, whatever guest that is not handsome, what are you afraid of? Suppose this exile put his back into it and drew the great bow of Odysseus. Could he then take me home to be his bride? You know he does not imagine that. No one need let the prospect weigh upon his dinner. How very, very improbable it seems. So they're all still kind of um, chilling at the house. Um, for the most part, and then Telemachus has his moment. So it says, Telemachus now faced her and said sharply, Mother, as to the bow and who may handle it or not handle it, no man here has no more authority than I do. Not one lord of our own stony Ithaca, nor the islands lying east toward Ellis. No one stops me if I choose to give these weapons outright to my guests. Return to your own hall. Tend your spindle. Tend your loom. Direct your maids at work. This question of the bow will be for men to settle, most of all for me. I am master here. Woohoo! 
too. So Telemachus finally tries to grow into his position. She gazed in wonder, turned and so withdrew. Her son's cl uh, clear-headed bravery in her heart. So he kind of grows up. But when she had mounted to her room again with all of her women, then she fell to weeping for Odysseus, her husband. So she doesn't know that Odysseus is back yet. Grey eyed Athena presently cast a sweet sleep on her eyes. So Athena kind of makes her go to sleep. Um, so yeah, all of this is happening. And then at the very end, it says, So effortlessly, in one motion, strung the bow, then slid his right hand the cord and plucked it. So the taut gut vibrating hummed and sang a swallow's note. Um, but yeah, and then it says, Then Zeus thundered overhead one loud crack for a sign, and Odysseus laughed within him that the son of crooked-minded Kronos had flung that omen down. Um, and so he shoots the bow perfectly. Um, there's even a crack of thunder from Lord Zeus himself. Um, and it says, Telemachus, the stranger you welcomed in your hall has not disgraced you. I did not miss, neither did I take all day stringing the bow. So everybody was like, oh my goodness. So Odysseus has strung his bow and won. Um, they take their places as father and son, and then he immediately starts murdering them. So, um, as you can see, so book 22 is them being murdered. So, if you look to uh, book 22, it says here, why do you think, what do you think of Odysseus killing the suitors? Is it justified? So, you need to consider, he murders all of them. You kind of need to consider why you think he did that. Um, they're all douchebags. They are eating all of their resources, and they won't leave, and they've been harassing uh, Telemachus and his mom for, like, ever. So you kind of get to decide if you think that's justified or not. And, you know, knowing Odysseus' personality, you can kind of choose whether you, you know, what drove him to this response. Um, the second question says, what do you think of his, of his killing of those who embraced his knees and begged for mercy? So he even murders everyone who tries to apologize and beg for mercy. He does not. He takes absolutely no prisoners. He literally kills everyone. So, yeah, no prisoners. Uh, third question says, what is the significance of the slang of the prophet Leotis? We'll get there. Number four says notice the description of the victorious Odysseus as splattered and caked with blood like a mountain lion so you know how do you think what does what image does that give you why do you think he's described this way the fifth question says do you see some similarities of character and behavior not only between Odysseus and the Cyclops but also between Odysseus and Telemachus so we're going to start to make some comparisons between Odysseus and his son and then also between the Cyclops as well so we start here um, and then it says, now shrugging off his rags, uh, the wiliest fighter of the islands, which is Odysseus, leapt and stood on the broad door sill, his own bow in his hand. He poured out at his feet a rain of arrows from the quiver and spoke to the crowd. So he's just like shooting arrows into the crowd. I'm sorry, I'm reading my book is why I'm sideways. It says, so much for that. Your clean cut game is over. Now watch me hit a target with no man that no man has hit before. If I can make this shot, help me, Apollo. He drew to to his fist the cruel head of an arrow for Atanoas, just as the young man leaned to lift his beautiful drinking cup embossed two-handled golden the cup was in his fingers the wine was even at his lips and did he dream of death how could he in that revelry amid his throng of friends who could imagine a single foe though a strong foe indeed could dare to bring death and pain on him and darkness on his eyes odysseus's arrow hit him under the chin and punched up the feathers through his throat so originally all the suitors were like there's no way that he's gonna beat up all of us like we don't care about you odysseus you're an old man you suck well odysseus just shot an arrow directly through atanoas's throat as he was drinking the wine from the chalice in odysseus's feast hall so odysseus is gonna start murdering everybody um, and then he is talking to all of them and he's basically like yelling at them and also killing them. So he says, you yellow dogs, you thought I'd never make it home from the land of Troy. You took my house to plunder, twisted my maids to serve your beds. You dared bid for my wife while I was still alive. Contempt was all you had for the gods who rule wide heaven. Contempt for that what men say you hereafter. Your last hour has come. You die in blood. <laughs> so there's a lot happening here. Um, they abused his household and his maids. They tried to take his wife when he was still alive, which is a thing. It says that they had contempt for the gods who rule in wide heaven. So there are a lot of things that they have done wrong that have angered him. And then Eurymachus totally snitches. And he says, stir, he says, like, spare your own people. And he's like, no. Um, and then Odysseus, yeah, he responds and he says, uh, there will be killing till the score is paid. You force yourself upon this house, fight your way out or run for it. If you think you'll escape death, I doubt no man of you skins by. So he's like, I will murder all of you. Good luck. So Odysseus starts killing everybody. 
Um, all of it is kind of crazy. Everyone is trying to arm themselves. Um, there is uh, like weaponry and stuff that they can access. Um, Slamicus is doing pretty good. Um, he hits somebody with a spear. It says the servants armed themselves and all three took their stand beside the master of battle. So the servants are kind of helping Odysseus in this situation. It says while he had arrows, he aimed and shot and every shot brought down one of his huddling enemies. So he is like destroying people with his bow and arrow. Um... Yeah, there's like a lot happening. It says Telemachus, one of the serving women, is tipping the scales against us in this fight. Um, but clear and sharp, Telemachus said, It is my own fault, father, mine alone. The storeroom door, I left it wide open. So everybody has weapons now because he left the storeroom door wide open because Telemachus is an idiot. But he's trying to, to grow up a little bit. He is, um, he is making an attempt. Um, and then... Um, Athena comes down wearing the guise of the mentor again, and this is Odysseus appealed to her in joy. Oh, mentor, join me in this fight. Remember how all my life have been devoted to you, friend of my youth. And then he says, for he guessed it was Athena, hope of soldiers. So he kind of cheated, and he can kind of tell it's Athena. Um, and it says, cries came from the suitors. Um, and then one of the suitors says, mentor, don't let Odysseus lead you astray to fight against us on his side. He says, um, and he, he says, think twice. We are resolved and he will do it. After we kill them, father and son, you too will have your throat slit. So the guy's like, I wouldn't fight with him because he'll totally kill you. But Athena's anger grew like a storm and wind as he spoke until she flashed out at Odysseus. Um, so she's kind of mad about what's going on. Um, and then it says, for all her fighting words, she gave no overpowering aid. Not yet. Father and son must prove their, me their metal still. So she kind of gives Odysseus and Telemachus time to prove themselves uh, before she helps them. She's there, but she still is kind of giving them time. Um, but yeah, they kind of kill everybody. Um, let's see. Oh, and here is, uh, here is Laodis. Sorry, I pronounced it wrong the first time. I see the accents now. So here's Laodis. Um, for me, it's on page 419. So it says here, now there was one who turned and threw himself at Odysseus's knees. Laodis begging for his life. So this is one of your questions. It says, mercy, mercy on a suppliant Odysseus. Never by word or act of mine, I swear, was any woman trouble here. I told the rest to put an end to it. They would not listen, would not keep their hands from brutishness. And now they're all dying like like dogs for it. I had no part in what they did. My part was visionary. Reading the smoke of sacrifice. Uh, scruples go unrewarded if I die. The shrewd fighter frowned over him and said, um, so <laughs> he appeals to Odysseus and throws himself at his knees. Uh, Odysseus responds, you were diviner to the, you were diviner to this crowd. How often you must have prayed my sweet day of return would never come or not for years and prayed to have my dear wife and beg at children on her. No plea like yours could save you from this hard bed of death. Death it shall be. He picked up Agalaus broadsword from where it lay, flung by the slain man and gave Laodice neck a lopping blow so that his head went down to mouth and tongue. So, cuts his head off. So, he kills this guy who was like, hey, I wasn't trying to, like, do anything. He was, like, a sorcerer, like, a fortune teller, um, like, a divinity. And he was like, yeah, well, I don't care. So, he cuts his head off. Um, so, you can kind of tell how Odysseus is doing at this point. He's a little mad. Everybody's dying. Um, there's this one really cool... I'm sure he's on by the cold weight. There's this one... Thing where he strings this dude up by his toes but i can't oh here it is <laughs> i found it so at the very end um it says from storeroom to the court they brought uh melanthias chopped with swords to cut his nose and ears off pulled off his genitals to feed the dogs and raging hacked his hands and feet away as their own hands and feet called for a washing they went indoors to odysseus again <laughs> wow so yeah he's a little brutal um and there's an obvious juxtaposition. He says that all of these people, he says they'll be hung like doves or larks and springs triggered in a thicket where the birds think to rest, a cruel nesting. So they're being like hung up like the nests of birds. Yeah, but then he cuts off his ears and nose, pulls off his genitals to feed the dogs and hacks away his hands and feet. And he's going to hang him on the storeroom. Great. So this just kills everyone um and then after this the next chapter you don't have to read is called the uh trunk of the olive tree um odysseus has to prove that he is odysseus to his wife it's been 20 years so odysseus looks really different so he has to prove that he is who he is they have an olive tree carved into their marital bed so it's like it's like a symbol it's like a whole symbol thing so that happens um and then warriors farewell um the way that odysseus's story ends is that he 
now that he is um, here again, Telemachus is made king, and then Odysseus actually takes people who have never experienced the sea before, and he takes them sailing. And I'm sure you're like, that is not a good idea, because Odysseus is a mess. Well, um, the whole thing of the hero's journey is, if you guys remember, um, heroes are supposed to become master of two worlds. So Odysseus's two worlds are land and sea. Um, he's now become a master of the sea because he's overcome the threshold. He has returned to the throne, and he has made it back from all of his trials. So now he's, like, master of the sea um so hopefully nothing messes up this time but he says he wants to take people that have never experienced the ocean before and he wants to take them sailing so that's kind of like his big heroic ending but um there are books 21 and 22 for you um it's basically Odysseus being ridiculous and killing everybody but I don't know I think it's kind of entertaining um but that's kind of like a big it's really a big moment for Telemachus he does a lot of his growing up Odysseus is just kind of like a jerk, but it's big for Telemachus. So if you guys want to read through it, you can kind of see that Telemachus is learning and that he's kind of growing up and coming of age, which is kind of like his big journey. Odysseus wanted to get home, but Telemachus was kind of trying to grow up with the absence of a father. And then once his father returned, he was kind of able to, you know, whatever. Anyway, I hope this was fun. Um, this is probably the last video I'm going to post, but we'll be, I really want to do Google Meet with you guys next week. Like after all your work is turned in, we can all meet up and say bye. So I have a date in mind. I'll post that on Schoology for you guys shortly. But I hope this was helpful. Um, I know the Odyssey was kind of short and confusing, but I really wanted to try. So try I did. <laughs> so here we are. This is what we did. So uh, good luck on your work. Um, please do the letter to future ninth grader. Some of you guys have already done them and they are awesome. So if you haven't done that, I, it's worth a lot of points. So if you do that, you should be fine. But if you would do that, that'd be great. Um, otherwise, you know how to reach me and I'll see you later. Ta-ta.